Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. It's our Old Town Grill High School Football Game of the Week. Tonight we are in Cumberland Gap, Tennessee, as the Panthers play host to the Hancock County Indians. Both teams 1-0 on the early season. Both teams looking to stay undefeated. Who walks out the winner? Stay tuned to find out. It's the Indians of Hancock County. It's the Panthers of Cumberland Gap. It's our Old Town Grill Game of the Week, and it's next. <laughs> Looks like we'll have Holden McDaniel, and I believe that is Nathan Fusen that is back to receive for Cumberland Gap as we await the clock to be reset. A lot of familiar names for Cumberland Gap from a year ago. The Panthers have a lot of uh, returning upperclassmen, a lot of experienced players. Yep. So, and, and you know what, looking at the roster, Hancock County has that as well. So it's going to be a nice balance tonight uh, between the more experienced players on both sides of the football. There's the whistle. Poor has it teed up. Foot will meet leather, and we are underway here at Panther Field as that kick will be taken over the far sideline at the 34. Coming back to our side, trying to find some blockers. Now back to the middle field of the 35 to the 40, and being eventually taken down by a host of Hancock County Indians is on the return. I believe it was number four. That's Nathan Fusen. He'll bring the ball forward to the Cumberland Gap 44-yard line. And the Panthers will start with a K and K medal first down in 10. Terrific way to start the football game for coming the gap. We know why. Now we now know why the Panthers lined up uh, in, in the special teams unit as they did, expecting the squib kick, and Fusen made the most of it. Ball's on the near hash mark. One receiver off to either side. Starting quarterback is Brunsma, the junior. Man in motion from the left to the right. Hand off. No, it's going to be fumbled, and Brunsma has to fall back guard as he tried to hand it off to his fullback. And the fullback was not ready for that one. Brunsma will take a loss of two on the initial play. Miscommunication in the backfield between Caden Brunsma and I believe it was Logan Miracle, the uh, junior listed running back slash linebacker for the Panthers. And we'll see if they keep uh, sending Dalton Miracle uh, in, the, uh, in, in the formation, putting him in motion throughout these uh, run lineups for the Panthers. We'll, uh, obviously, we'll hope that the exchange in the backfield goes a little more smoother next time around. Second down and 12. Again, one receiver to either side. Wings and a... It's almost a split back formation, man in motion left and right. This is a pitch out to that man in motion to the 40. Kicks the first tackle but cannot break the second one. Is on the run is Dalton Miracle. He'll bring the ball back to the original line of scrimmage, back to the 44, and it'll bring up third down. This time they do pitch it to the man in motion. Again, that being Miracle, the senior running back, but a nice job by the Hancock County defensive line and linebackers to meet him just past the line of scrimmage. And now, all of a sudden, with a third down and long scenario, uh, the Indians here may be expecting a pass on defense. Third down and nine. They gave Miracle three on that run. Ball now over on the far hash mark. 10-28 in counting, left to go first quarter. First offensive possession for either team. The Panthers are faced with third down. Two receivers left side, one to the right. This is Brunsma dropping, looking, goes across the middle, and he's shorthanded that one incomplete as he tried to get it into the hands of Miles Cole and Hancock County's defense. They gave up good field position on the kickoff, but they forced the Panthers to a three and out. And give credit to the senior Seth Hipshire for forcing that incomplete pass as Brunsma saw the big senior coming his way, wasn't sure if the running back could pick up that block all the way, and he forced him to get rid of the ball a little bit sooner than he would have liked, forcing uh, the inaccurate throw. Coming on the gap will be forced upon here on fourth down and nine. Hancock County will send a receiver back to there. He's still backpedaling to about the 17. No rush on the punt. This one will eventually turn and take a bounce. Picked up at the 25. And going nowhere. Now still on his feet and eventually taken down in the backfield at the 20-yard line. It's still going to give him forward progress. They will not. And the Indians will start with a K and came out of first down and 10 at their 20 after the run by Short. Yeah, we mentioned his name in the pregame, Ethan Short, the junior. Man, it's going to take a lot of Panthers to bring him down as the uh, evening progresses, as we saw right there, had a host of tacklers uh, to bring the junior down. But now, with Hancock County awaiting their first offensive possession of the ball game, we've got to think that the uh, early favor goes in the uh, visitor side. It's a K and K medal, first down and 10. Let's pull the ball to the 21-yard line. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Offset eye to the right, quarterback 
under the center. He'll hand off, coming to the near sideline of the 25, and lowering his head and out near the 30-yard line. Let's see where he'll win out of bounds, as on the run was short. And I believe they'll mark short out at about the 28-yard line. Boy, I tell you, two plays for Hancock County, counting the punt return, both into Ethan Short's hands, and he just bulldozed a Cumberland Gap defender. And it's got a nice block as well from Seth Hipshire. We mentioned both of those guys' names just a few moments ago. It looks like they'll be the bulk of the offense for Hancock County and the Indians with a very nice, impressive play to get things underway. Second down and three. One receiver to the left side, two to the right. Ace backfield for your quarterback, T.J. Poor. Hand off up the middle and getting the ball forward close to the first down marker, but not re yet reaching there was Hipshire. Better job that time from Cumberland Gap anticipating the run at the line of scrimmage. A nice job from the defensive lineman. Couldn't see exactly who got credited for the tackle there, but now forcing a third down and short. Uh, we will expect the Indians to keep it on the ground this third down with either short or with Hipshire as uh, T.J. Poor could have a similar scenario to Oneida's quarterback last week. Uh, could be uh, a heavy dose of handing the ball off. It'll be third down, let's call it half a yard. Ball in the near hash mark for the Indians. One receiver to the left side is Josh Bolden. One receiver to the right. Split backs behind the quarterback, Poor, as he goes under the center. Poor, hands off, up the middle, getting the first down and falling his way forward. And to the 33-yard line on the return, on the carry, I should say, is Hipshire. And the Cumberland Gap defense was uh, set up. They had the right idea. There wasn't a single Panther defender that was within five yards of that football pass the line of scrimmage, but it wasn't enough uh, to stop Hipshire from uh, getting past the chain. And uh, Hancock County gets the first first down of the evening. Their drive continues. To K and K Middle, first down and 10 for the Indians. Ball in the near hash mark at the Hancock County 33-yard line. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Split backs once again behind Poor. Poor looking at a four down line. Poor, hands off to the left side and bringing the ball forward near the 35 yard line. This time was Ethan Short. Minimal gain for Short on that occasion for Hancock County. You know what, whatever you come up with on first down really determines how you'll play second and third down, obviously. And with a short gain there, we'll see if Hancock County uh, Ops to go to the outside again as they had that big gain to short earlier on in the drive. See if they go uh, towards the defensive backs instead of going right at the linebackers. It'll be second down and eight. Ball resting with the nose right on the 35-yard line. One receiver to the right side, two to the left. Ace backfield for poor. Man in motion left to the right. It's going to be, it's going to throw it deep, and there's nobody within... 12 yards. Intended receiver will be Jaden Rolston. And I'm not real sure if Royston was supposed to have taken off earlier or if short, or excuse me, poor overthrew that one. But nevertheless, it'll bring up third down and long. Yeah, I think it could have been a combination of the two. I think may have had a miscommunication in uh, the specific route that uh, Royston was supposed to be running. And I think Poor may have uh, overshot him uh, just a hair, but now with a third down and short, uh, the first third down, or third and long, I should say, the first uh, that Hancock County has faced tonight. We'll see if they try to put the ball back in the air or see if they get it done on the ground. Third down and eight. One receiver to either side. I formation for Poor. Poor rolling out. Looks like an option. He'll kick it out to the 30. And lowering his head is short, and he will come up near the line of scrimmage. Back to the 35, and that will bring up fourth down for the Indians. Very well defended by Cumberland Gap on the third down and eight. I, as I think it was Miles Cole, the senior defensive back that was credited for the tackle, staying with it, realizing that the option was coming on both sides. That play was going nowhere for Hancock County, and a nice defensive stand for the Panthers, giving up one first down, but now forcing a fourth. Seth Hipshire will drop back to punt here on fourth down and nine. Cumberland Gap will send Nathan Fusen. Back to receive as he stands at his own 45. Here comes the pressure. Punt is off. A beautiful high end over end kick. Fusen has to Willie Mays it at the 30. Gets a block. Coming to the near side. Got another block to the 35. To the 40. To the 45. Stutter steps to the 50. In Hancock County territory to the 45. Eventually taken down at about the 42 yard line. 
Wow, talk about uh, a bad situation gone uh, worse for Hancock County as it seemed like there wasn't an Indian that could bring Nathan Fusen down. And boy, he is a playmaker. The junior wide receiver and defensive back, as you said, had to backpedal what looked like 10 yards just to make the catch. And then all of a sudden, uh, as he was backpedaling, was able to break so many tackles and finds himself all the way into Hancock County territory. So now with two drives for the gap, both with excellent field position. 6.33 left to go, first quarter. This is the second possession for the Panthers on offense. Each team has had one. Each team has one punt. It's a K and K metal first down and 10. One receiver to either side. Wing look. There's a wing to either side for Brunsman, a back behind him. Man in motion from the right to the left. And it's going to be, we're going to call the play dead as Hancock County jumped on the far side. Yeah, I believe it was an offside against the defensive end for the Indians as he moved the, the man in motion as yeah. bait there for the Indians. I don't know if he necessarily had to stop the play, but when Cumberland Gap stopped on that one, the play had to be whistled dead. So mark five forward for the Panthers. And it will bring up first down and five. So far, I've been very impressed with Cumberland Gap's special teams uh, strategy here this afternoon. As, uh, again, it's primarily been Nathan Fusen, but he's gotten uh, terrific help from his blocker so far and on the two returns. The field, the field position battle has been won by Cumberland Gap, and then some. We'll see if they can capitalize now on the penalty from Hancock County. Balls in the near hash of the 36 with another K&K medal first down and 10. Man in motion right to the left, hand off to the fullback, and the Indians will swallow him in the backfield as it was handed off to Logan Miracle, and Miracle will lose yards back to, I believe, the 39-yard line. Well, thanks for the uh, penalty on Hancock County the previous play. It won't be uh, too long to go for the Panthers, but they lost a couple on that one as that uh, had not very much room to work with, uh, the ball carrier being Logan Miracle. And again, it looks like Hancock County's defensive line came to play tonight. They gave him a loss of two to bring up second down and seven. One receiver to either side again. Brunsma with wing to either side. He's going to drop back looking to pass. Got all kinds of time. Throws down the right sideline, and it will be complete. Inside the 10, down near the five-yard line. I believe that was Caleb Edwards on the long reception. Well, when the defensive line for the opposition is playing as well as, it, as they are, then what do you do? You put the ball in the air, you throw it deep towards the sideline where only the receiver can get it, and that is exactly what Caden Brunsma did on second down. Put it right in the stomach of Edwards, and he was able to haul it down all of a sudden. Coming the gaps, knocking on the door. Mark him at the seven. 31 yards on the pass completion will set up another K and K medal first down. This time first down and goal to go as we have an official timeout with 6.03 left to go here inside of the first quarter. First time either team has been in the red zone. Really the first time either team has been on the opposing side of the field. I remember coming the gap actually started this drive inside of Hancock County Territory. Again, thanks to the special teams game, you see that the Panthers are as far as they are now because of that terrific punt return from Fusen that set it up. And obviously now with the huge pass completion from Brunsma to Edwards on the fly pattern towards the end zone. And we have an official timeout on the field. I believe we're having a clock issue as the Head referee will be talking to head coach Delane Klein over here on the near sideline. Coach Klein's got a lot of options here on this first down and goal scenario. Got a lot of, a lot of playmakers. He can try and put the ball uh, in their hands, as, as we just saw from the previous play. You can uh, try and throw a one-on-one -on -one lob pass to Edwards, see if he can haul it down in the corner of the end zone. So now the officials will go over to the far sideline, and they'll talk to head coach Brandon Gibbs, and they may be keeping this clock on the field, which will be... Difficult for the players and even more difficult for us up here in the booth. Well, sure, sure. Cumberland the Gap also has another threat on the uh, the opposite side of the field at wide receiver, that being Brady Pierman. His name hasn't been called yet this evening, although very early in the first. Or they could put the ball on the ground and try and power it in that way. It's a K and Kim Middle, first down, goal to go. Handoff, fullback up the middle, inside the five, driving his way in. Did he get there? He did. Touchdown, Cumberland Gap on the run, Logan Miracle. And talk about redeeming yourself 
for the junior running back as the last time that he was handed the football, he was stopped almost immediately. This time he was not to be denied, dragging Indians along with him, powering his way into the end zone. And that's a nice start for just the second drive for Cumberland Gap, only able to put 15 points on the board a week ago at Union County, and they're already uh, with their first score of the day in just their in just drive number two. They will set up for the extra point. And it looks like it may be John Bingham that may be down there as we'll get a stoppage and we got a flag on the play. Yeah, dead ball, false start against Cumberland Gap. I believe it was a snap infraction. I think it was. Because it was almost like a he moved the ball a little bit. And now with you being backed up as far, Cumberland Gap may consider Maybe trying for the two-point conversion. Doesn't look like it. They'll still line up for the PAT. Yeah, they're going to still line up this, this extra point. And there's the snap. Bobbled. There's the kick, and it's straight into the line. And it will be no good. But it should take us to the break, and it will. 5.50 left to go first quarter. Our new score. It is Cumberland Gap 6. It is Hancock County 0. It's the old town grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite, because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary, the perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. Make k, k Metal Sales your only stop for all your residential and commercial metal building needs. For the past 23 years, k, k Metal Sales has covered the tri-state area with quality custom roofing and siding with many grades, gauges, and colors in stock. If you're looking for complete steel or wood building packages or steel or wood trusses, k, k Metal Sales can help with that, as well as heavy-duty custom carports. Great folks and great prices. Stop by k, k Metal Sales located at 6986 Cumberland Gap Parkway or call 423-869-4261. Back to Cumberland Gap High School here at Panther Field for the home opener for the Cumberland Gap Panthers. They put the first points on the board here this evening. 41 yards, 43 seconds, three plays. Extra point was low, and I guess you consider it blocked. And it is six to nothing in favor of the Cumberland Gap Panthers as they'll be kicking this one off for the first time here this evening. Again, going from right to left. Hancock County with an opportunity here. They've got some playmakers and some speed to see if they can find a lane here on this kickoff. In motion, nice end over end kick. It'll be taken at about the 16 yard line. To the 20, to the 25. And going down, question was did the ball come out? They're going to say no, it did not. And the Indians will start with a K and came out first down in 10 at their 31 yard line. Obviously, with plenty of time here still in the first quarter, no sense of urgency yet for Hancock County. Stick to the game plan, with that being the trio of Short, Poor, and Hipshire in the backfield, that three-headed monster that Hancock County has going. So, obviously, a big defensive series for Cumberland Gap as well to see if they can get the offense back on the field after scoring for the first time on that three-play drive. Ball resting at the Hancock County 31-yard line in the middle of the field. One receiver... Well, now they're rotating players in and out. And if he goes to the sideline, is that not an illegal substitution? They're going to say no. Full house backfield for the quarterback under the center. It's going to be miscommunication. Balls on the ground, and I believe the Panthers. Nope, they're going to say the Indians got that one back at the 30-yard line. It was right at about two players. And it looks like the Indian man just got in front of that Panther. Nevertheless, a miscommunication of the backfield will cost... Hancock County a yard. Yeah, the Indians very fortunate to still have possession of the football. Another uh, bumble in the backfield between uh, Poor and the intended ball carrier. I think, again, kind of the route that the run was supposed to go was uh, a little bit flustered and it forced the fumble. Uh, but credit to Hancock County for being able to fall on top of it and not give the Panthers any more momentum and give them the ball back. Second down and 11. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. I formation behind Poor. Poor. Rolls off, looking, throws. It's complete to the 30, to the 35, to the 40, and dragging Panthers on the reception is Hipshire. He will be out at about the 41 yard line, which should be very close. And I'm going to say it is going to be third. It's going to be third down. 
Nice play call from Coach Gibbs in Hancock County when the run game hasn't been working on the last few plays. A nice play action roll out to the near sideline and an easy dump off path pass to uh, Seth Hipshire who does the rest of the work for Hancock County. They did give the Indians the K and came out on first down and 10. Balls at the 41 yard line. Two receivers to the left side, one to the right. Ace backfield behind Poor. Man in motion from the left to the right. It'll be a handoff up the middle to Hipshire. And it's going to take a host of Panthers, but they will stop him for minimal gain. They'll bring him to the 43-yard line for a gain of two. Cumberland Gap's done a nice job here in the first quarter of not allowing Hancock County to build any momentum. It seems like the Indians haven't been able to have uh, any successful plays in a row. They have a, a pretty good gain, but then the next play after that is short. And then they have another pretty well game, but then the next play after that goes for minimal gain. So a nice job by the Panthers' his defensive line and the linebackers to uh, once again stop Hancock County on first down, make it second and long. Second down, eight yards to go, upcoming for the Indians. Ball's in the middle of the field. Again, they're going from left to right. Two receivers to the left side. One to the right for the first time, I believe, this evening. We'll see Poor in the gun with a back to his right side. Come on, Gap. Backs off the pressure. Poor. Going to throw on the left sideline. He's got a receiver open, and it is incomplete at the 30-yard line, as it was intended, to believe, for Josh Bolden. Or that may have been Jaden Royston. No, it is three. That was Bolden. But the defense comes back at the last second. It was a little underthrown, and it'll force third down. Yeah, no uh, showing of play action this time from Hancock County. Like you said, lining up in the shotgun for the first time and firing one to the near sideline, but a good job of holding McDaniel, although he was beaten initially with the football being underthrown, able to uh, force the incompletion with the SWAT, the junior defensive back. That'll bring up third down and eight. Again, ball at the Hancock County 43-yard line. They'll come out of the huddle with one receiver to the left side, two to the right. Poor again in the gun, has a back to his right side. Press coverage from the Panthers. Option. Poor kicks out to the 40, cutting back up to the 45 and getting close to the 46-yard line on the run is Hipshire. Yeah, the late blitz from Cumberland Gap paid off for the Panthers. Uh, pressuring Hipshire as much as uh, he would have liked. You know, Hancock County, for this rushing attack of the Indians, they were able to have their way early on. But since then, since the first couple of plays, Cumberland Gap's defense has settled in nicely. We heard Coach Klein talk about it in the pregame interview that the defense did play very well yep. last week against Union County, only uh, allowing 13 points. And now uh, forcing a fourth down. We'll see if Hancock County goes for it, though. They are huddling like they may do it. They're going to go for this one on fourth and five near midfield. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. I formation for Poor. Four down linemen for Cumberland Gap. Rotating linebackers. Almost a 4-4 look. Trying the hard count. Poor goes back into the center. Tries it again. And we will get a timeout taken by Hancock County. We'll take it with them. 3.06 left to go. First quarter, our score. It's Cumberland Gap 6. It is Hancock County, nothing. Thank you. Six left to go here inside of the first quarter. Cumberland Gap leading this one six to nothing. You mentioned before we went to break about the defense and what Coach Klein was talking to us about in the pregame. Last week we talked about it, it was a dogfight with the Patriots. They went to halftime last week scoreless. Zero to zero. Cumberland Gap runs the opening kickoff of the second half back to break that one open. Cumberland Gap's defense right back here on track here in the first quarter keeping Hancock County scoreless. And it looks now like the Indians are going to be forced to punt here as it'll be Traven Cooper now back to punt for the Indians. Now we saw that Coach Gibbs was just trying to get Cumberland Gap off sides there in that previous lineup. Watch for a fake here as the up man is Hipshire. 
There it is. It's Hipshire up the middle. Cumberland Gap was ready for it, and Hipshire will bring the ball forward to the Hancock County 49-yard line. Needed two more on that one, and it'll bring up a turnover on downs. And you know that's exactly what Coach Klein was telling Cumberland Gap during that timeout from Coach Gibbs of Hancock County. He was making sure that the Panthers were ready for the fake. They sure were, as you pointed it out. Hipshire poised and ready to receive the snap. He wasn't able to get it, though, and the Panthers' defense comes up big again. So Cumberland Gap will start with the ball at the Hancock County 49-yard line. Um, clock has been turned off as they are keeping it on the field, so we're unsure of how much time is left. We do know there is less than three minutes left to go here inside of this first quarter. Cumberland Gap, this will be their third offensive possession, their second offensive possession to start inside Hancock County territory. As looks like once again we got an official timeout as they're going to not real sure what they're waiting for. When looks like we're gonna have our clock operator come into the booth. So we will have a working scoreboard clock. Now we know what the uh, malfunction was with the clock. I don't know if you heard that at home or not, but here's a K and came out of first down and 10 for the Panthers. One receiver to either side, wing to either side, man in motion left to right. Option out to the wing. It's complete, and Hancock County will bring that Panther down back near the line of scrimmage as on the run was number 21, Dalton Miracle. Looks like they'll give Miracle back to to the 50-yard line back to midfield, but we have an official timeout. I believe that is Miracle that is down on the field. He, uh, as he went around the corner, really fought for a lot of yardage with a lot of players. So really don't know what the injury is. Definitely not going to speculate to what it might be. But he is being intended to by Coach Klein as well as the athletic trainer here at Cumberland Gap High School. So in case you missed that, we went silent there for just a second, but I'll, I hope you actually heard that at home. What happened with the clock malfunction was as the official was running down the sideline, because the new rule, they, have to, they keep it on the field. They have done that for a little bit, a couple of years now. The cable that controls the clock was actually snapped in half on the sideline by somebody accidentally stepping on it. So therefore, the clock will be hopefully kept up in the booth for the remainder of this contest. And Cumberland Gap High School will have to, I guess, buy a new cable before <laughs> next week because they have Mex County at home. After the injury timeout, it'll be second down in 10. Ball over on the far side, near the far hash mark. One receiver, make that two receivers to the left side, one to the right. Man in motion from the right to the left. Pitch out to that man in motion, coming to the near side of the 50. To the 45, stutter stepping, spin move to the 40, and eventually being taken down near the 40-yard line is Cumberland Gap, as on the run was, I believe that was number, was that 14? I think it was Logan Miracle. It was Logan Miracle that time coming in motion. Yeah, and, and Cumberland Gap goes with uh, a pitch out to the right side of the previous place, so now they're going to uh, pitch it to the opposite side and get uh, almost enough for the first down. It was, it was a beautiful looking spin move from Logan Miracle and that will most likely take us to the end of the quarter, maybe not. It's third down in short, third down in two. Man in motion left to the right, hand off to the fullback here on third down. He will get the first as Miracle will be spun down at about the 37 yard line. He'll gain four and that will do it here for the first quarter of action. We played one here at Cumberland Gap High School. Our scores, we take it to the break. It is Cumberland Gap 6. It is Hancock County 0. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OT. The OTG is the place to be. 
Make K and K Metal Sales your only stop for all your residential and commercial metal building needs. For the past 23 years, K and K Metal Sales has covered the tri-state area with quality custom roofing and siding, with many grades, gauges, and colors in stock. If you're looking for complete steel or wood building packages, or steel or wood trusses, K and K Metal Sales can help with that, as well as heavy-duty custom carports. Great folks and great prices. Stop by K and K Metal Sales located at 6986 Cumberland Gap Parkway, or call 423-869-4261. Back up to Cumberland Gap High School as we get ready for the second quarter of action. Panthers lead this one 6 to nothing. They have the ball driving in Hancock County territory. The ball will rest at the Indian 37-yard line, and it will be a K&K medal first down and 10. One receiver to the left side, one to the right, man in motion. This is going to be an option play. Bronsma pitches out to the left side, to the 35, to the 30. First down to the 25 and taken out of bounds. Over on the far sideline is the Cumberland Gap Panthers. And I believe that was McDaniel, holding McDaniel, number 20. Or was it 20 or 28? One of the two. <laughs> it was a two-something. It is 20. You are correct. That was holding McDaniel. So coming to the gap, pitching right back off to the left side, the same area where they just got the first down on the uh, previous play that sent us into the second quarter. And now coming to the gap, really pushing with some momentum on the rushing attack. We saw them score the previous drive with a long pass. Now they're eating it up on the ground game. K and K Metal first down and 10 at the Indian 23. One receiver to either side. Brunsma, man in motion left to the right. Fakes the pitch. Brunsma's got a throw down the sideline. Wide open receiver. Bobbled and caught. Touchdown. Cumberland Gap tried to make the highlight reel there. Caleb Edwards. Wow, what a what a miraculous play from Cumberland Gap there for the touchdown play. As, as uh, Brunsma was able to corral a high snap at first and then fired off. He saw Edwards wide open as the... Uh, Got past the gap in the secondary, and like you said, bobbled the uh, bobbled the pass to uh, initially secure it in the end zone, and now coming to the gap second score of the game, equaling what they did for the entire contest last week at Union County. Getting close, they had 15. I just meant score wise. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I know what I'm talking about Anna. Come okay. on. Coming to the gap will attempt the extra point. It'll be Fusen to have the hold. Snap is down. The kick this time is up. This time the kick is no good. Off to the left. Timeout on the field. Our new score. It is Cumberland Gap 12. It is Hancock County 0. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OT. The OTG is the place to be. Make K&K Metal Sales your only stop for all your residential and commercial metal building needs. For the past 23 years, K&K Metal Sales has covered the tri-state area with quality custom roofing and siding with many grades, gauges, and colors in stock. If you're looking for complete steel or wood building packages or steel or wood trusses, K&K Metal Sales can help with that, as well as heavy-duty custom carports. Great folks and great prices. Stop by K&K Metal Sales located at 6986 Cumberland Gap Parkway or call 423-869-4261. Cumberland Gap, last scoring drive, five plays, 49 yards. No unofficial, no official or unofficial time on that one as we had the clock malfunction to start the drive. But we have 11.26 now left to go here inside of this first half. And the Panthers are up by the score of 12 to nothing to start this one off. And uh, right now you take away the first drive where Hancock County's defense really came to play. Cumberland Gap has really showed their will on offense. Yeah, no doubt. I think it's been a nice balance both with the passing game and with the rushing game. We saw Cumberland Gap get the majority of the work done on that five-play drive on the ground, if not all of it, before that touchdown pass to Caleb Edwards that sealed the deal. So, yeah, the Panthers minus that first drive where they were getting the kinks out just mm -hmm. a little bit with the three and out. They've really had their way with Hancock County's defense. And now, speaking of the Indians, the offense now has got to respond with 11.26 to go in the second, having surrendered back-to-back -back scores. And it will be Cumberland Gap to kick this one off. End over end kick. It'll be taken on a jump at the 16 to the 25. Speedster to the far sideline to the 35. And still on his feet. Actually got to the 30 to the 35. and goes down about the 36, 37 yard line for the Indians. We'll start with a K and came out of first down and 10 at the 36 yard line. 
the freshman Hunter Hatfield, the kickoff return man for Hancock County. And now with the Indians again, we mentioned that they're going to have to maybe maybe start opening up the playbook a little bit as Cumberland Gap has uh, found Coach Gibbs' scheme here at least so far in the first half. The defensive line has really come to play the last few series. And for Hancock County, you've got to stay on the field for more than one set of downs, obviously. Got to try and uh, get the uh, Cumberland Gap defense a little bit gassed as the Panthers have done to Hancock County. Balls on the far hash mark at the 37-yard line of Hancock County. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Eye formation for poor. Hipshire is the fullback. Short is the deep back. It's going to be a handoff to Short. Trying to find blockers. Does a spin move and will go down for positive yardage at about the 30, quite close to the 39-yard line. Again, we mentioned that Short is a very hard ball carrier to take down, very broad, and a very powerful running back, as is uh, Hipshire for Hancock County. But coming the gap did a nice job. He was able to break the initial first contact but was brought down not long after. So another good play from uh, the Panthers' defensive line with the linebackers helping out. I want to point this one out. The two teams these two played last week are playing each other right now, and they're in the second. Union County lead Cosby 22 to nothing. Here it's second down and eight. One receiver to either side. Eye formation for Poor. Poor rolls off left side, looks, throws into the flat, and it's going to be incomplete. Trying to get it off into the hands of Cooper, who actually stopped a little on the drive, kind of a hesitation, and had to go back to play defense at the end. Well, it was just really great coverage all around for Cumberland Gap. We saw that uh, Poor was looking for Hipshire again on the short pass that we saw earlier on on the previous drive. He was all bottled up, so he instead tried to get the ball into the hands of Cooper, but another nice defensive play from Holden McDaniel. That's two nice plays of the defensive back position in pass coverage that he has made uh, to, per to force an incompletion. And now it's third down and long. Indians are one for three on third downs here this evening. This one's third down and eight. One receiver to the left side, two to the right. Shotgun formation for Poor has a back to his right side. Now he'll move the back to his hip shire to his left hip. Rolling to the right, off to the flat is complete to the 40, and Cumberland Gap will have none of this as they will keep the gain minimum. As on the completion, it was off to Hunter Hatfield, number 26. And so Hancock County hasn't really been able to get uh, the, the the big gains, haven't been able to uh, get the momentum going with the deep pass, so they tried to opt for a short one and let the Indian try and do the work after the catch. Unfortunately, he was brought down by first contact, he being the freshman Hatfield, and that's going to force another fourth down and most likely another punt for Hancock County. And the Panthers' defense has looked stellar thus far in the first half. Cumberland Gap sends two receivers deep as it will be Hancock County to point punt here on fourth down and five. Hipshire is the punter on this one. Steps into it, gets a nice spiral that will take a weird bounce, and Cumberland Gap will just have to let this one roll, and it will die just inside the 20, call it a 19-yard line for the Panthers. Another nice punt from Hancock County. It looks like when the Indians are forced to give the ball away, they do uh, put Cumberland Gap in some uh, in some deep field position, you know, barring a nice return from Brunson. You knew that Brunson wanted to get another, another crack at it, but he had Hancock County uh, closing in on him, so uh, opt to play the safe route and start the ball right at the 20-yard line. And for Cumberland Gap, with 9.29 to go here in the second frame, we'll see if they look to do what they did in the previous drive, which is pound the run game and then burn them deep with a pass. As Brunsman will come off the sideline with the play. Again, 9.29 left to go first half. We'll remind you at halftime we will go through around some scores from around East Tennessee. We'll also get a score from the Claiborne Middlesbrough game. Here it's a K&K middle first down and 10 at the 20. Man in motion. It's going to be a handoff up the middle to the 25 and eventually going forward near the 30-yard line and getting close to the first down as on the run, I believe, was 14 Logan Miracle as Hancock County has a player slow to get up. Another nice carry for Miracle and, and maybe a better job by Cumberland Gap's offensive line to allow Miracle plenty of room to run and get into the open field. And another nice first down carry for Cumberland Gap. The first play of the drive to establish some momentum and it looks like it will be much more the same for the Panthers here on the next drive. Something I was talking to some of the people that we're getting here earlier, we were wait, kind of waiting around to go on the air, was we kind of thought one of the 
I guess the differences between these two schools and what would play a factor tonight for Cumberland Gap in this one is the depth. You, know, you look over here on the Cumberland Gap hold sideline, and they've got players that stretch single file for about 20 yards, whereas Hancock County really only came, I believe when I counted on the roster, about 25 to 30 players on their roster. And again, it's, it's, it's a difference in size of school, Hancock County being a 1A school, Cumberland Gap being a 2A school as the injured Indian Goes off to the other side. That is Stetson Collins, number 53 for Hancock County. But that may be, it's going to play a factor, especially the way both these teams like to run the ball. Eventually, you've got to believe Hancock County is going to get tired. But just because it's it's August, it's hot, and there's just not enough depth for that team. Yeah, absolutely. So Kane came out on first down and 10. One receiver off to either side, a wing to either side, as Brunsmo stands in the gun. It's going to be a handoff up the middle and taking the ball and spinning to the 33-34 yard line once again was, I want to make sure it is, Logan Miracle. Yeah, Logan Miracle seen a heavy dose of the carries for the Panthers, especially here in the second quarter. And now with uh, some Panthers rotating in on the second down play. Again, you know, it, it's not much. It's just a four-yard gain, but it's a positive gain every time for Cumberland Gap. Not many negatives here on the rushing attack for CG. Second down and six. One receiver off to either side. A wing to either side as Brunsma stands with a back behind him. Man in motion. Brunsma fakes the pitch, looking, feels the pressure. He's going to run this time to the 30 and eventually gets back to the line of scrimmage and may have even gained a yard on the scramble, and they will give him to the 35. Well, Brunsma had Trabian Cooper trailing him basically the entire way, obviously looking for the deep route, looking to uh, burn the Hancock County secondary. The Indians were ready for that one. And uh, like you said, Brunsma may have even gained a yard there on the quarterback uh, forced uh, to, to scramble uh, as he was able to stay alive for several yards before he was finally brought down. It'll be third down and five upcoming for Cumberland Gap. They are unofficially two for two on third downs here this evening. One receiver off to either side. Man in motion from the right to the left. Brunsma is going to drop, looking, rolls off to the left side, throws deep, and it will be incomplete. As Hancock County Secondary was awaiting that one and saw it coming, and it will bring up fourth down for Cumberland Gap as it was intended for Brady Pierman. Wow, another interesting call from Coach Klein and Cumberland Gap going for another deep pass for what was uh, the second play in a row, but it was a very nice play from the sophomore defensive back, Devin Blevins, that was uh, able to force the incompletion. And uh, again, it was a good job from Brunsma to make sure that if it wasn't a catch from his receiver, it was an incompletion. Uh, but nonetheless, nice defensive play from Hancock County, and now the Indians get the ball back. So a minor positive uh, for the Indians on the defensive side of the ball. Hipshire back to return from his 29. Here's a high spiraled kick. Hipshire will take it to 35 on the run to the 40 and gets tripped up out of the ankles at the 45-yard line. He really outran. He passed his first blocker and did not have another one for another five yards. It was Logan Miracle and Dalton Miracle who both made the tackle on Seth Hipshire there. Going low, if, you, if you've got a big back like that, that's how you try and take him down is, uh, is on the lower body. And so now with Hancock County, this is with good field position again at the 45-yard line for the visitors and the Indians. And you've got to establish some sort of momentum. Ever since that first drive when they got uh, a few good plays early on, Hancock County has really been, uh, been silenced on the offensive side of the ball. And they've got to really establish some progress here as we uh, get close to the midway portion of the second quarter. 7.30 left to go first half. Again, it's 12 to nothing, Cumberland Gap. To Kane came out of first down and 10 for Hancock County at their 45-yard line on the near hash mark. One receiver off to either side, split backs behind Poor. Poor had Cumberland Gap jump. He'll hand off up the middle, Hipshire. Man, he is a beast. He will just drag Panthers to the 48-49 yard line. Looks like Cumberland Gap did get back. No penalty against them. It'll bring up second down. Yeah, almost uh, went all the way fully committed to that offsides penalty, but just avoided the flag. And, you know, it's been not really we've uh, a f an aspect of this game we've had to talk about much because I believe there's only been, what, one penalty, maybe two in this entire game, both against Hancock County. I think we only had one there in the first quarter. Yeah, so uh, the Panthers have been uh, completely flagless up until uh, this point. A nice job avoiding those mistakes. Second down and six. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Offset eye to the right side for poor. Hipshire is the fullback. Cumberland Gap backs up the defense. It's going to be a handoff to the right side to Short. Short stretches forward and may get back to the line of scrimmage. May have got half a yard, 
but it's going to bring up third down again for Hancock County. Wow, talk about calling a defensive audible there for Cumberland Gap. You had a lot of Panthers scrambling uh, just moments before that snap was away. It looked like they may have been anticipating a pass. It went off for a run to the far sideline, but still it didn't uh, amount to much as Cumberland Gap was right there ready for it. The defense uh, for the Panthers, uh, as we said, has been very consistent tonight. And Hancock County, you've got to believe right here at midfield has got to try their, their hardest here to get this first down and stay on the field. Third down and six. One receiver to either side. I formation for Poor. Poor takes the snap. Going to roll off left side looking, feeling the pressure. And he's going to get sacked. He's going to be sacked back at the Hancock County 39-yard line for a loss of 10. Another upperclassman Panther making a standout defensive play. Tyler Raines listed as a linebacker on our roster sheet. Pursued Poor from the get-go. Wasn't... Uh, it didn't really even give Poor a chance to try and uh, survey the field because he had him on his heels the entire time. Brings him down. Another huge defensive play for CG. They're going to put it at the 40, so the sack was a loss of nine, and now the Indians are forced to punt once again. As it'll be Hipshire dropping back to punt. High snap. It's going to be a high end-over-end -end kick that will take a bounce at the 35-yard line and will take a Cumberland Gap bounce forward to the 37, and that's where the Panthers will start once again with a K and K medal first down and 10. The Panthers have really had their way since that first drive here. Again, we keep going back to that because it was such a pivotal early portion of the contest. I think one of the biggest plays thus far in the evening was prior to coming the Gap's first TD of the night. Uh, the long pass completion from Brunsma to Edwards that was completed, that has forced Hancock County to keep guessing all night long, and it's led to another score since then for the Panthers. So Kay and Kim Edel first down and 10 for the Panthers at the 36-yard line. One receiver off to either side. Man in motion from the right to the left. It's going to be an option play, and Brunsman's going to keep it. He's to the 40 and goes forward to about the 44-yard line. And there's our first glimpse of Brunsma rushing with the football as the quarterback position. That was a designed QB run on first down and a good call from Coach Klein, uh, you know, to get the quarterback involved in the run game on first down. Another uh, very decent gain, better than average pickup for the Panthers. That rushing attack keeps moving. Eight yards on the run, sets up second down and two. Ball in the near hash mark. One receiver off to either side. Again, a wing to either side and a deep back behind Brunsma. Man in motion from the right to the left. Brunsma once again keeps it, kicks up, and is taken down. Did he spin forward? I believe he did, and will pick up the first down. And they will give him the first down as he'll bring the ball up to the 47-yard line. It was the Ironman, Seth Hipshire, who was able to make the tackle on Brunsmo. But again, as you mentioned, not before the QB was able to spin his way past the chains for the first down. Cumberland Gap stays on the field. You've got to believe now, with less than four minutes to go in the quarter, with the clock ticking, the Panthers would love to uh, have the football all until the, the waning moments until uh, the half, uh, keeping the ball on the ground and you know, keeping that Hancock County defense tired. To K and Kimmel first down and 10 again. One receiver off to either side. Man in motion this time from the left to the right. Misdirection going to the left side. To midfield. To the 45. To the 40. Spun around and eventually taken down inside Hancock County territory. At about the 39-yard line on the run was Nathan Fusen. You know, you could just methodically pick apart the defense, or you could give the ball to the jitterbug junior Nathan Fusen and let him do all the work. As, uh, boy, when he gets into the open space, he's got tremendous speed uh, racing right past the far sideline and picking up a huge gain. Cumberland the gap, moving the ball with ease at this point. 14 yards on the run, keeps it on the far hash. This time at the Hancock County 39-yard line. Another K and K medal first, down in 10. One receiver off to either side. Again, Brunsma has a man in motion now left to the right. Here comes the blitz. Brunsma pitches out. This is a fumble and eventually be falling upon back at the 47-yard line. Late flag comes in as on the recovery was Dalton Miracle. But now we're going to see what the flag is at about the 40-yard line. We're going to see it was thrown by the back judge. They're talking to Hancock County. This may be a hold. And if it is, and it is going to be holding against Cumberland Gap, and they're going to decline the penalty due to the loss on the fumble. 
And it'll bring up second down. Wise decision by Coach Gibbs in Hancock County. It was a, you know, like you said, a big enough loss to uh, decline the penalty. It was a good job by the Panthers to not try and, and, you know, be the hero and make something out of nothing and just pounce on the football to avoid the turnover. Clock runs 3:27 in counting. Left to go here inside of the first half. Again, Cumberland Gap leads this one 12 to nothing. Ball is at the Hancock County 47-yard line. It'll be second down, 18 for Cumberland Gap. One receiver off to either side. Brunsma sends a man in motion to the left to the right, and here comes the pressure again. Picked up, Brunsma throws off to the flat to Fusing to the 40. It's complete. And as he tried to stop his momentum to run around the defender, Fusin slides to the turf and will bring the ball close to the original line of scrimmage. Another great call from Coach Klein as Hancock County again brought the pressure for the second straight time in this and on this uh, particular play after they lose the ball with the, uh, with the uh, I should say, the bobbled pitch the previous play. Now you put the ball in the air and again throw the ball towards Fusen's way, and now all of a sudden you're in third and manageable. Third down and eight upcoming here for Cumberland Gap. Ball at the Hancock County 37-yard line. Two receivers make that... One receiver to the right side, two receivers to the left. Man in motion is fusing from the right to the left. Brunsma drops, looks, goes across the middle. It is complete. Inside the 30, inside the 25, down to about the 22-yard line. As that was, is that Miles Cole? Yeah, I think it was Miles Cole receiving the perfect pass from Brunsma uh, to the senior running back as Brunsma was able to uh, trust his offensive line, was able to set his feet and fire one off. That was right in the numbers, just how you teach it for Brunsma. 15 yards on the completion, sets up a K and Kimmel first down and 10 at the 22. Again, one receiver right side, one to the left, man in motion from the right to the left, from the left, yeah, to the left to the right, I should say. Brunsma running to the 20, stutter step to the 15, takes a dive inside the 15, down to about the 10 yard line. Man, Caden Brunsma has really taken this drive over by himself, not only with the pass game, but with his legs as well. What a juke move uh, once he was in space to get past the Hancock County defender. And now, thanks to uh, his plays both with his legs and with his arm, Cumberland Gap's in scoring position again. It's another KK medal first down as we are at 145 in County left to go first half. Panthers do have all three of their timeouts. And Hancock County will take this time out to reset the defense. We'll take it with them. 142 left to go first half. Our score, it is Cumberland Gap 12. It is Hancock County 0. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite. Because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. Make K&K Metal Sales your only stop for all your residential and commercial metal building needs. For the past 23 years, K&K Metal Sales has covered the tri-state area with quality custom roofing and siding with many grades, gauges, and colors in stock. If you're looking for complete steel or wood building packages or steel or wood trusses, K&K Metal Sales can help with that, as well as heavy-duty custom carports. Great folks and great prices. Stop by K&K Metal Sales located at 6986 Cumberland Gap Parkway or call 423-869-4261. Back out to Cumberland Gap High School as we have 142 remaining here inside of the first half. Cumberland Gap leads this one 12 to nothing. Knocking on the door back in the red zone. They will have a K and K medal first down in uh, first down in goal now from the 10 yard line. Again, as we approach and get to halftime, we'll go over some scores from around East Tennessee very quickly. Union County has opened up their lead 30 to nothing. Wow. Still in the first half. Yeah, I think that we, it's pretty safe to say that's a different Patriots squad than usual. On first down, one receiver to the right side, one to the left. Man in motion from the right to the left, Brunsma. For scrolls, looking, trying to do something with it. He's to the 10, and he'll go out of bounds back at the, right, the 11-yard line as that was a busted play from the word go. Yeah, it was a busted play. As you said, there was another kind of a miscommunication in the backfield. We've seen a few of those uh, tonight, not only for Cumberland Gap, but with Hancock County as well. The good news is they are still knocking on the door. They still do have uh, two, possibly three more chances to try and punch it into the end zone, counting fourth down, obviously. It'll be second down and goal. Ball still at the 10-yard line. The clock should have stopped and did stop with 1.36 left to go. Ball's on the near hash mark. 
One receiver to either side. Brunsma sent the man in motion from the right to the left. Pitch out to that man is Fusen. Fusen's going to have to put on the guns. And it'll be Hancock County to get a huge stop for loss. Back past the 15. See what they're marking. I believe it's about the 16-yard line for a loss of six. Well, that was a uh, meeting of two very fast players between Nathan Fusen of the Gap and Hunter Hatfield, a freshman of Hancock County. And like you said, Fusen tried to use the stiff arm on that one to try and shed the tackler, but uh, just not as much power for Fusen. He does rely on speed primarily, but a nice tackle from Hatfield to, as you said, force a very big stop. Third down in long. Third down goal to go. Under one minute left to go here inside of the first half. Cumberland Gap does have all three timeouts remaining, allowing the clock to run. Man in motion left to right, but before we do, we have a flag on the play. I believe we're going to get a false start, and we do against Cumberland Gap, which will back them up even further. And remember, it was just a few moments ago that we were talking about how Cumberland Gap had been completely spotless in terms of penalties, and now because of a pair of those, and uh, of course with a couple of losses on the ground game as well, now it's with third down and a long way to go. Clock will run under 45 seconds left to go. Third down and goal, ball at the 21-yard line. One receiver right side, one to the left. Man in motion from the left to the right. Brunsma looks, throws off, and it is incomplete. Had to try, try to go up the ladder for that one, and it will fall incomplete, and it will be fourth down now for Cumberland Gap. Intended for Fusen right up the middle of the field. Had the right idea, I think, that maybe Fusen may have been thinking about after the catch before securing the football forces the fourth down. Now you've got to believe that uh, Coach Klein could possibly go for a field goal opportunity or may just try to punch it in one more time now that the clock has stopped. The clock is stopped, but they're 21 yards away from the end zone. They cannot get a first down. It is fourth down in goal, and they will go for it. And I like the decision. One receiver off to either side. Brunsma sent the man in motion left to the right. Here comes the pressure. Brunsma steps up, looks, throws off to the plat. It is complete to Fusen to the five, and he'll be taken down at the five-yard line. So it's a lot of gainage but it's going to bring up a turnover on downs. Well, nonetheless, it was a good play from Fusen to not repeat his mistake and haul this one in. It was almost an identical play uh, to that of the previous one. Uh, just throw in a Brunsma breaking a tackle in the, uh, in the backfield, and it was almost the exact same play, obviously with a completion this time around, although Coach Klein and CG didn't get the result they wanted, which was six points. 31 seconds left to go, first half. Hancock County will have the ball with a K and came out on first down and 10, and there five-yard line. Cumberland Gap does have all three of their timeouts remaining. Interested to see if they want to play field position here and maybe force Hancock County to run three plays. Sure. Or if they'll let Hancock County maybe run this one once and go to the break. I formation, one receiver off to either side here on a K and K metal first down. It's going to be a handoff to the fullback. And bring the ball forward a few yards is Hipshire. And we have a stoppage. And Cumberland Gap does take the timeout. Yeah, so it looks like uh, what you predicted, Adam, is uh, coming true for Coach Klein with just 25 seconds in the half. Uh, the Panthers may try and get the football back for uh, one last heave if they can uh, stop Hancock County from picking up a first down. Again, with the Indians deep inside of their own territory, they're likely to just keep on rushing the football. But with CG having all three of their timeouts, this is uh, a, a, very a very likely possibility. It was one yard on the run by Hipshire. Out to, should be out to around the six, maybe the seven yard line. But again, Hancock County is going to have to, you got to imagine they're going to run the ball here on second, make Cumberland Gap spend that timeout. Then it's decision time. You're deep in your own territory. You right. want to throw the ball. Take the risk of a turnover. Take the risk of stopping the clock. And that all depends on what happens here on second down. Yes. Maybe Hancock County rushes the ball and they get past the chains and that would just undo everything. So really uh, all kinds of uh, scenarios that could unfold here in the next 25 seconds. Come on, get back on the field. Here comes Hancock County. Again, it will be second down. Let's call it eight yards to go for the Indians. Panthers leading this one 12 to nothing. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. This is an offset eye to the right side as Poor goes under the center. Poor, hands off, breaking the ball forward and getting out close to the 15-yard line. We have a stoppage again. I believe Cumberland will spend their second timeout, and I believe that was short. 
the speed back on that one. Yeah, I believe it was short with the carry, and, and with that play taking about 10 seconds off of the clock for Hancock County. Again, Coach Klein and the Panthers opting to take another T.O. Ball is at the 15-yard, just outside, inside the 15-yard line, which will bring up third down for the Indians. This evening, third down has not been the charm for them. They are one of five on third down so far here this evening compared to Cumberland Cup's three for five yeah. on third down. But, uh, you know, this is interesting because there's a strategy to this because not only we're talking about running the clock and running the ball, you got your center to quarterback connection, your quarterback to running back handoff. All it takes is one bobble, which we've seen a lot of on both teams here this evening, yeah. for there to be a turnover, and then Cumberland Gap has the ball deep in the territory. I think for Hancock County here, try to get the first and try to get to the break. Yes. I think that's the ultimate goal. Just get to those double zeros. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Split backs behind poor. I would look at Hipshire here. He's going to hand off up the middle. And there's a fumble on the play. And looks like the ball will be marked forward. The ball is being spotted past the first down marker to the 17-yard line. We have a stoppage on the field as there is a Hancock County Indian down. And I'm assuming and that the, the Indians the, did retain possession yeah, of the football. They, they, it's going to be a first down on the run. I get, believe the officials are saying there was no fumble. And it looks like there will be one final timeout here taken by the Panthers as there's now just five seconds remaining on the clock. Another uh, play that took ten off of the scoreboard. So another play, as we said, we mentioned there's always that possibility of getting the first down and that's exactly what happened for Cancock County. So very, a very nice uh, re side relief, if you will, for the Indians there. With five seconds left to go, coming on the gap now out of timeouts after spending all three of them here on this drive, you kind of wonder if Coach Gibbs would like to open up here on this it's a K&K middle first down, but if he wants to open up on this play, maybe run a screen, maybe run a little uh, a, out into the flat, maybe a bubble screen to one of his speed receivers sure. here. Yeah. You're really going to get one shot. Now, you're still 83 yards away from the end zone, but you got to try to find something to go into the break with. Yeah, hey, you never know what could happen. Like you said, any kind of, uh, of, of positive outcome is going to benefit Hancock County now down by 12. It's a K&K middle first down and 10. One receiver to the right side. I formation for the Indians. Taking their time, looking over it over. Poor. Bobbles the snap. It's fumbled and picked up by the deep back. Short. It happened. It was too late for Cumberland Gap, and that will take us to the break. We played one half here at Cumberland Gap High School. Our halftime score. It is the Panthers 12. It is the Indians 0. Folks, stay tuned. Halftime festivities coming up as we continue on with our Old Town Grill Game of the Week here on the LMU Sports Network. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite. Because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. Make K&K Metal Sales your only stop for all your residential and commercial metal building needs. For the past 23 years, K&K Metal Sales has covered the tri-state area with quality custom roofing and siding with many grades, gauges, and colors in stock. If you're looking for complete steel or wood building packages or steel or wood trusses, K&K Metal Sales can help with that, as well as heavy-duty custom carports. Great folks and great prices. Stop by K&K Metal Sales located at 6986 Cumberland Gap Parkway or call 423-869-4261. Hancock County won the toss and deferred, so they will have the ball first here in the second half. Coming on, Gap will be kicking from left to right on your radio dial. Hancock County going from right to left. For the Indians, you want to get something on the board on this drive. Their defense has done well considering, only giving up two touchdowns, but sure. you've got to feel like the offense has got to do something to help them out and at least get a long drive here. Yeah, I think that's number the number one goal here the first drive of the second half. There's no goal as important in the second half as the very first. And it's kicked off. It'll be taken, bobbled, 
and eventually picked up the 30. To the 35, and eventually being taken down is the Indians at the 35-yard line, and that's where the Indians will start with a K and K medal first down. Remember, Hancock County got a hot start to the first half on their opening drive, but were forced to punt late into that series. And now as the Indians have had a half to rest and uh, get back, you know, I, I should say their stamina should be back up yep. uh, at, at, full, at the full height. So now with Hancock County, their first drive of the second half, again, just down by 12. You look for as many mistakes as they've had. It's just a two-score ball game here for the Indians. It's a K and K medal first down and 10. Ball at the 35-yard line, one receiver to the left side. They'll split two to the right. Quarterback is poor in the gun, has a back to his left side. Poor. Going to hand off, and this is going backwards. The running back, Seth Hipshire. Hipshire is forced back with forward progress to about the 32-yard line for a loss of three. Another nice defensive start to a quarter for Cumberland Gap. The Panthers' defensive line, I know we keep, you know, we keep, uh, keep talking about it, keep mentioning how, how impressive they've been this evening, but it really has been. You can see it's translated over from their success against Union County, who's really putting it on Cosby right now, that their defense has, uh, has come to play in 2018. Second down, 13, ball in on the far hash mark. One receiver to either side. Offset out of the left for Poor. Poor looking over the defense. Four down lineman for Cumberland Gap. Poor, pitch out to the left side. Trying to get to the angle of the corner and going down about the 32-yard line once again on the run. And make sure this was this is not Hipshire. That was Ethan Short. And I believe he will pick up no gain. Actually, they'll give him a yard to the 33, but it'll bring up third down. It was Miles Cole and Darren Robertson, the two Panthers, that were able to bring Hancock Downey County down on the minimal goal. And now with third down and long, you've got to expect that the Indians will put the ball in the air. And as this second half progresses, if they can't find a gap in Cumberland Gap, minus, you know, pardon the pun, if they can't find a, find a gap in the Panthers' uh, run defense, they're going to have to start putting the ball in the air more consistently. Third down and 12. Two receivers right side, one to the left. Shotgun formation for Poor. Hipshire on his right hip. This is poor, rolling out right side, looking, throws, and it is incomplete. And it'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, very nicely defended as well. For, for as, for as uh, consistent as Cumberland Gap's run defense has been, you know, it, their pass defense has gone kind of overshadowed thus far tonight, and that was a prime example of that. The pass from Poor was a little bit low for the intended receiver short, but nonetheless the defense was right there to make sure that the uh, pass would not have been completed, and that's going to force another punt for Hancock County. So, so we stress the importance yeah. of the opening drive, and, of course, the Indians now with a three-and-out scenario, it was really uh, uneventful from the get-go for HC. Hipshire will drop back to punt. Coming on the gap has two backs deep at the 30. High snap for Hipshire. And it is partially blocked. And it will be eventually down by Hancock County in Indians territory at the 45-yard line, right about where the first down marker was. And that's where the Panthers will start with a K and K middle first down and 10. Man, what a perfect scenario for the gap here in the second half. Your defense comes up huge yet again as they have all night long. And then you partially block the punt from Hipshire. They got into uh, the deep backfield as quickly as possible. And now, as you say, they start off the drive basically where Hancock County just ended theirs. 46-yard line of the Indians is where the Panthers will start with a K and K medal first down. We'll see Dalton Miracle and Caden Brunsma come off the sideline. Brunsma, the starting quarterback this evening, a junior. Out of the huddle, one receiver off to either side. A wing T formation with a wing to either side and a deep back behind Brunsma. Man in motion from the left to the right. Brunsma hands off to the fullback up the middle to the 45. And down to about the 42-yard line. And that's been... Cumberland Gap sort of bread and butter throughout the first half. They have all these, you know, these decent gains on the ground for the Panthers throughout uh, the whole first two quarters, and it's nothing spectacular most of the time, but it's a positive gain nonetheless and keeps the defense uh, rolling back on their heels play after play, and uh, it's going right into Coach Klein and the Gap's favor here, and you know how deflating that would be for Hancock County if the Gap were to score on this drive to make it a three-score game. Second down and six. One receiver to the right side, one to the left. Man in motion left to the right. Here comes the blitz up the middle. Picked up, Brunsma throws off, and it is 
incomplete. His receiver, I believe, was Edwards, who cut off his route, and it'll bring up third down. Well, as you said, the blitz was picked up very nicely by the Panthers' offensive line, although I believe that Brunsma did get the, the football away a little bit earlier than intended, possibly, and then we had a, on the, the streak route uh, miscommunication with Edwards. Uh, the clock will stop before this third down opportunity for Cumberland Gap. We'll see if they try and just put it back on the ground again as they've that's the way they've been able to move the ball primarily. Third down and six, one receiver again to either side. Man in motion left to the right. Hancock County will jump and will be called for. And that will certainly uh, help Cumberland Gap out just a little bit with another uh, penalty from the Indians. Again, it's not been too many flags that we've seen tonight. At least they don't come in successive form like they often do at the high school level. So what was third down and long? What was It was third and six. It's now third down and one. Ball now at the Hancock County 37-yard line. One receiver to the right side. One to the left. Brunsma again in the wing T formation. Man, no, no man in motion. Hands off to the fullback up the middle. And Hancock County will stuff the run and throw it back. Is on the run was Miracle. And he is corralled. They'll give him forward progress to the 38 for a loss of one. Wow, Seth Hipshire with a nice play to get past the Cumberland Gap offensive line and into the backfield and wrestle Miracle down to the turf. And what a defensive stop from Hancock County. Again, the Indians could get life from their defensive unit if they were to force a punt. Again, it, it is fourth down and short, so we'll see if Klein tries to go for it here. It's fourth and two, and I think he'll go for it with the ball being... Pretty much, it's in Hancock County territory at the 38-yard line. I didn't want to say deep, but it's in Hancock County territory, and they will go for this. One receiver off to either side. Man in motion from the right to the left. Pitch out to that man in motion, cutting it up to the 40, to the 35, to the 30. Taking a hit and falling forward past the 25, actually near the 25, and it's a K&K medal first down and 10. What a great block from Cumberland Gap's senior defensive back and running back, Dalton Miracle who uh, really got the defender for Hancock County out of the way and allowed Cumberland Gap plenty of real estate to work with. And that was a first down and then some. What a great call from the Gap, and their drive stays alive. 18 yards on the run, but I believe it was Holden McDaniel. And it's a K and K metal first down and 10 at the 25-yard line. One receiver off to either side. Man in motion from the left to the right. Brunsmo's going to drop back, feels the pressure, steps up. He's going to just take off with it, and he'll eventually take a hit past the 25 near the 21 yard line. And there's another occasion where Brunsma attempting to pass the football saw nothing developing and had pressure coming at the same time so he decides to just tuck it and run it himself for positive results. So far Brunsma has been I think the overall offensive MVP for Cumberland Gap uh, throughout this contest doing it both ways uh, as he's shown a lot of progress on the ground game that I don't know if he uh, showcased as much a year ago. 7.27 and counting third quarter. First offensive drive here of the second half for the Panthers, and they are driving. It'll be second down and five, ball resting at the Hancock County 21-yard line. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Brunsman's going to hand off to the fullback up the middle, streaking his way past the 20 to the 15, still on his feet, past the 10, inside the 10, down to the nine-yard line. Once again, that is Logan Miracle. Man, coming the gap really has a nice mix of power and speed when it comes to Miracle and Fusen. That time, number 14, Miracle did the work for Cumberland Gap, bulldozing through the defense, and this has been a picture-perfect drive almost for Cumberland Gap. The Panthers, we've seen them strike for a touchdown on quick drives, and we've seen them really pick apart and, and uh, chew the clock down on drives as well. We saw them do that at the end of the second half mm -hmm. to no results. We'll see if they punch it in this time. This is a K and K metal first down and goal to go at the nine. One receiver off to either side. Bronzma, man in motion from the left to the right. Handoff, misdirection, and Hancock County almost took that handoff. They knew that was coming so much. And it'll be a loss on the run. Credit the tackle again to Seth Hipshire of Hancock County. He's made as many plays defensively as he has on the offensive side of the ball. And a nice defensive play from the line of the Indians. Hancock County will take a timeout. We'll take it with them. We have 621 left to go, third quarter. Come on, Gap leads this one 12 to nothing. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite, because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. 
the perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. Make k k Metal Sales your only stop for all your residential and commercial metal building needs. For the past 23 years, k k Metal Sales has covered the tri-state area with quality custom roofing and siding with many grades, gauges, and colors in stock. If you're looking for complete steel or wood building packages or steel or wood trusses, k k Metal Sales can help with that, as well as heavy-duty custom carports. Great folks and great prices. Stop by k k Metal Sales located at 6986 Cumberland Gap Parkway or call 423-869-4261. We have 621 left to go third quarter. The Indians of Hancock County just spending their first time out here of the second half. Got to give the defense a breather as this drive started back for Cumberland Gap at the Hancock County 46-yard line. Over four minutes ago, it has been seven plays so far. This will be play number eight on this drive. Yeah, reminiscent of the Panthers' last drive of the first half that, again, they got all the way down inside the 10-yard line and wasn't able to punch it in. And we'll see if they can... Uh, do the opposite this time and find pay dirt. Second down and goal from the 11. Two receivers right side. This is Brunsma. Rolls off to his right side. Looking, throws off. It is complete into the end zone. Touchdown, Cumberland Gap into the hands of Tyler Reigns. What a great job from Brunsma again as he rolled to the near sideline and baited the defense in, acted like he was going to run again and found his receiver wide open who's, who uh who rolled right into the end zone. Another great play from Brunsma at the QB position, and just like that, the gap's up by three scores. Was that Reigns or was it McDaniel? I believe it may have been McDaniel. 20 instead of 28, so yes. my apologies to, to them. So McDaniel catches the touchdown from 11 yards out. The extra point snapped down. The attempt is up. The attempt this time is good. Time out of the field. We'll take it again. 6-14 now left to go third quarter. Our new score, it is Cumberland Gap 19. It is Hancock County, nothing. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite, because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. Make k k Metal Sales your only stop for all your residential and commercial metal building needs. For the past 23 years, k k Metal Sales has covered the tri-state area with quality custom roofing and siding with many grades, gauges, and colors in stock. If you're looking for complete steel or wood building packages or steel or wood trusses, k k Metal Sales can help with that, as well as heavy-duty custom carports. Great folks and great prices. Stop by k k Metal Sales located at 6986 Cumberland Gap Parkway or call 423-869-4261. And Cumberland Gap will be kicking this one off. Beautiful end over and kicked it as high and taken inside the 20. Out to the 25 and past the 30. We'll go Hancock County and they will bring the ball forward to the 33 yard line. And that's where they'll start with a K and K medal first down in 10. We talked about this earlier in the first half, Adam, with depth playing a big issue here tonight with Hancock County having a vastly uh, smaller roster than Cumberland Gap. We know that most of those defensive players for the Indians have to suit up again on offense the very next drive. Obviously, it wasn't a problem against Cosby a week ago, but you've got to believe that uh, Cumberland Gap's defense is one of the better in the region. Mm -hmm as they have uh, been dynamite this evening. So it'll be a K&K &K medal first down and 10 for Hancock County. Ball resting at their 33-yard line. Second offensive possession of the second half for the Indians. One receiver to the left side, two to the right. Shotgun formation for their quarterback. He's going to pitch out. That's a fumble picked up by the running back, Seth Hipshire, as the quarterback, T.J. Poor, waited too late to try to pitch that one. And it'll be a loss of three. Well, the play was initially intended to go to Hibshire, just not the way that Hancock County had uh, anticipated. Another heads-up play in the backfield by Cumberland Gap to uh, smother the quarterback and force a, uh, a loose ball scenario that was uh, somehow picked up by Hibshire. We have a Hancock County Indian down. Looks like it just merely cramps. Uh, an update from a few minutes ago. Middlesbrough 8, Claiborne 0 still in that particular contest. Union County is into the fourth. They now lead Cosby 44 to nothing. Wow. 
How about those Patriots here in week two? Union County, that is, uh, that's amazing. Something we looked up at the end there, Chucky Dote now leads Sullivan Central to break 22-20. to 20. That's a big matchup because Sullivan Central now has the longest losing streak in the state of Tennessee. If they can pull that one over against Chucky Doak, um, that would be a huge victory yeah, for be, Central. Absolutely. It would be monumental. Tennessee High leads Lehigh 34 to nothing. That's at the halftime break. West Green leads Thomas Walker, Virginia, 14 to 7. That one's in the second. Uh, still working on the cramps here right now. Uh, third quarter, Oneida leads Gatlinburg Pittman 27 to 7. Looks like the Indians may improve to 2 and 0 there. Oliver Springs leads Kingston 14 zip in the second. Maryville now leads Oakland 14 6. That one's a third quarter score. Meigs County leads Hickson 41 zip in the second. Again, that's who Cumberland Gap will have next week. Oakdale leads Jellico 12 to 8. That one's a second quarter score. David Crockett has now scored over Campbell County. That's a 7 to nothing score in the third, just right down the road, right down Highway 63 here. And here's your one. I know you've been waiting this halftime. Harden Valley leads West 12 to 6. Well, we found, so, we found the scoreboard as we were uh, shut out in week one, uh, uh, us being the Rebels of West High School. I was going to say, for those that are unfamiliar, Brandon went to West High School, so that's why we always try to look up their score. We'll try to keep you up to date on a lot of those as we continue on through the night. Looks like we're back in the action here. It'll be second down and 13 for the Indians. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Offset eye to the left side. Again, your quarterback is the senior T.J. Poor. Pitch out to the left side, looking. And Cumberland Gap's defense is all over this one as it will be taken back to the 20 three-yard line for a loss of seven. Wow, did you see the speed of Cumberland Gap's defense as they had that pitch smothered from the jump, almost before the snap. It's almost like they knew it was going to happen. That was defended so well as there were so many gray jerseys in the area to stop that uh, run for, as you said, a big loss on the play. I've been just really, really impressed with Cumberland Gap's defense tonight. Probably the best that I've ever seen in a singular contest. It'll be third down and 20 upcoming here for the Indians. They are two of seven on third downs here this evening. Ball on the left, hash mark at the Indian 23. One receiver left side, one to the right. Shotgun formation for Poor has a back to either side. Poor dropping, throwing, fly pattern, and it will be incomplete. It will be incomplete over on the far sideline, almost intercepted, and it'll bring up fourth down. It was Holden McDaniel for Cumberland Gap that was running stride for stride with the freshman Hunter Hatfield of Hancock County, who again got in there, nearly pulled off an INT, almost forced another Hancock County interception. But, you know, a fourth down and 20 will do just fine if you're the Panthers. So now Hancock County, I was going to say, will be forced to punt. And now they will drop back a punter. As this will be, I believe, Hayden Stewart back to punt. I believe you're right. Looks like a seven. High snap. And the punt is taken. It's going to be a short punt that will take a Cumberland Gap bounce. And the Panthers will start on offense in Hancock County territory. See where they'll mark this one. It was actually the quarterback, T.J. Poor, for, so, okay, for Hancock Poor. County. That was the punter there on that occasion. 17 as, instead of 7. Yes, yeah, he had, a, again, a lot of Cumberland Gap uh, players that were going right for that football and resulted in a short punt. Panthers will start with a KNK middle. First down and 10 at the Indian 33-yard line with 431 left to go here inside of this third quarter. And another very impressive part of this game that Cumberland Gap has played very well. The field position game has really favored them all night long, and this is just another example of that. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Again, Brunsma has wings to either side of the deep back. He's going to hand off to that deep back going up the middle, and it'll be a miracle past the 30 to about the 28-yard line. Yeah, no need to... Uh change up the offensive playbook if what you're doing is uh, working as well as it is with uh, Logan Miracle. I think he's been the, the uh, I think he's, his number's been called more than any other Panther tonight as, at least on the ground game it has been. Working toward player of the uh, player of the game honors. Yeah, he's competing with Brunsma himself. Yeah. 
Second down and five. Again, one receiver to either side. Hand off back up the middle. Coming to the near sideline to the 25. Lowering the hand. Lost the ball. Got it back. This is Miracle still on his feet. And brings the ball forward to the 20-yard line, which will be good enough for a K&K &K medal first down. I say that, and then a late flag comes in. You jinxed it, Adam. If they just let me finish my sentence, it would have been <laughs> all right. But we'll see, uh, see what we get here. Dead ball. Personal foul against the Indians. Wow. So the run by Miracle will stand to the 20, give him eight on it, then tack on to be half the distance to the goal at this point to the 10-yard line. Well, what was a uh, another impressive run from Miracle? You know, he lowered the shoulder uh, with, I, I wouldn't say a stiff arm, just kind of bowling uh, through the defender. He hit him so hard, he kind of surprised himself a little bit. Another nice run. K and K metal first down, goal to go. One receiver off to either side. This is Brunsma pitching out to the left side. To the 10, to the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, Cumberland Gap, and I believe that was Nathan Fusen. Fusen gets it into the end zone from 10 yards out, and right now Cumberland Gap starting to open this one up. Yeah, sure is. Uh, Brunson, again, we've mentioned that he is the speedster for Cumberland Gap. You get him uh, in the outside on the option or the pitch or what have you, and you've got some blockers in front of him, then it's all over for the Panthers, and Cumberland Gap finds the end zone again. Two drives here in the second half and two TDs. It will be Cumberland Gap going for the PAT. It'll be Drew Ramsey listed as the kicker on the on the roster. And Hancock County looks like they will jump and will give Cumberland Gap half the distance to the goal here. So it'll be Fusen on the hold, Ramsey on the attempt once they uh, reset this one after the penalty. And actually Cumberland Gap will decline the penalty. Take two for the PAT. So again, it'll be Fusen on the hole, Ramsey on the attempt. Snap down, the kick is up, the kick is good. Time out on the field with 3.02 left to go, third quarter, our new score. It is Cumberland Gap 26, it is Hancock County nothing. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family. More than friends, bring a hearty appetite. Because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. Make K, K Metal Sales your only stop for all your residential and commercial metal building needs. For the past 23 years, K, K Metal Sales has covered the tri-state area with quality custom roofing and siding with many grades, gauges, and colors in stock. If you're looking for complete steel or wood building packages or steel or wood trusses, K, K Metal Sales can help with that, as well as heavy-duty custom carports. Great folks and great prices. Stop by K, &K Metal Sales located at 6986 Cumberland Gap Parkway or call 423-869-4261. Coming on the gap's last drive, three plays, 33 yards, took 129 off the clock. And another seven points on the board. Dan Alley, this one 26 to nothing. And, Brandon, you got to wonder if Hancock County is getting tired at this point because, again, we've talked about the depth. Their defense is being run around and run through right now, and the offense is not helping the defense out by going three and out. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think that uh, Hancock County was able to, uh, you know, maintain their pressure uh, through the most of the first half, but now as the game wears on further, it's really settling in. Kickoff taken at the 17. This is to the 20, and that's where the Indians will actually start at about the 23-24 yard line. Nice tackle. I think it was maybe number two, Brady Pierman by Cumberland Gap on the uh, kickoff return to uh, thwart that forward progress of Hancock County. And as you said, the Indians have, I believe, yet to have a drive here in the second half that hasn't gone beyond three plays to my uh, calculations. Yeah, three plays now, yeah. So, so it'll be a K and K middle first down and 10. Ball resting at the Hancock County, he's called the 25-yard line. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Ace backfield for Poor. Man in motion from the left to the right. Poor drops, looks, feels pressure, throws off, and it's incomplete. 
And we're going to get a flag on the play as there was no receiver in the area. And I don't think that one crossed the line of scrimmage. So we're going to get intentional grounding against poor. Yeah. Which would be a loss of down and the ball spotted at. Now we're going to get roughing the passer. Really? So we got roughing the passer against okay. Cumberland Gap. I believe, I guess, that that flag would have to go against number 63 for Cumberland Gap, that being the junior defensive end, Trey Turner, who was in pursuit of the QB. I guess just made a little bit too much contact after the pass left the quarterback's hands, and I guess that's what, that is what uh, drew the flag from the official. Could have also hit him in the head for all we Sure, yeah, yeah it could, be, could have been a number of things. There'll be another can came out of first down and 10 for the Indians. Ball at the 39-yard line of Hancock County. One receiver to the left side. One to the right. Wing back to the left. Ace backfield behind Poor. Man in motion from the right to the left. Poor. Hands off on the jet sweep, and it's spun around and thrown back for a loss. On the run was Hayden Stewart, number seven. And Stewart goes back for a loss of five. That's multiple times that Tyler Raines, another senior Panther, has gotten into the backfield for Cumberland Gap and thrown down the defender for uh, what seemed like that was with, with ease for Tyler Raines there as he saw the play developing in his head before the snap and capitalized on it. And it's all Cumberland Gap at this point, especially on the defensive side of the football. Ball back to the 34-yard line, second down, 15 for Hancock County. As we approach and go under two minutes left to go, third quarter. Cumberland Gap leading this one 26 to nothing. Indians break the huddle. They'll send two receivers to the left side. They'll send one to the right. No backs behind. Poor has a wing to his right side. Man in motion left to the right. Poor rolls off, looking, throws at the screen pass, and it's going to be incomplete. He just had to get rid of that one. And it'll be third down I'm coming here for the Indians. It seems that many times that's happened against Hancock County. When the Indians call for a play action and roll to either side of the sideline, there's a Panther there on the defensive side immediately. That speed, at least whether it be from the defensive end or the linebacker, is, uh, is really prevalent for Cumberland Gap. And it uh, showed itself again uh, with uh, another play that really went nowhere for Hancock County. Indians face with third down, 15 yards to go. They are two for eight on third downs here this evening. One receiver to the left side, two to the right. Poor in the gun, has a back to his right side who I believe is Hipshire. He's gonna roll off right side using Hipshire as a blocker, throws off and it'll be incomplete. And it's gonna be an incomplete pass. And I believe that will bring fourth down. Yeah, sure will. That would think that was Miles Cole. Uh, another senior defensive back for Cumberland Gap that was uh, right there with the Hancock County receiver all the way on the far sideline. Ball just out of reach from uh, T.J. Poor, the quarterback for Hancock County, and another fourth down for the Indians. So we will see Hipshire drop back to punt here for the Indians. Cumberland Gap passed two receivers back about the 27-yard line. Better snap this time. Hipshire gets this one off. It's straight up end over end. Takes a Cumberland Gap bounce back into Hancock County territory. And the Panthers will start with a K and K medal first down and 10 at the Hancock County 40. See where they mark it. It's either the 48 or 49. And they're going to mark it at the 49 yard line. Wonder how many consecutive drives in a row that has been that Cumberland Gap's been able to start in Indian territory. Well, they've been on their side, on the positive side of the 50 the entire second half. Yeah. Uh, you have to go back to the last offensive drive they had in the first half where they started at their 36-yard line. Wow. Seems like it's been even longer than that, the way that this second half has gone. 120 left to go, third quarter. Come on, Gap will take a timeout. We'll take it with them. 120 left to go, third quarter. Come on, Gap leads this one, 26 to nothing. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family. More than friends, bring a hearty appetite. Because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. 
Make K&K Metal Sales your only stop for all your residential and commercial metal building needs. For the past 23 years, K&K Metal Sales has covered the tri-state area with quality custom roofing and siding with many grades, gauges, and colors in stock. If you're looking for complete steel or wood building packages or steel or wood trusses, K&K Metal Sales can help with that, as well as heavy-duty custom carports. Great folks and great prices. Stop by K&K Metal Sales located at 6986 Cumberland Gap Parkway or call 423-869-4261. Back to Cumberland Gap High School where it is Cumberland Gap leading Hancock County here in the third quarter, 26 to nothing. Panthers just took their first time out here of the second half as the ball sets in Hancock County territory at the Indian 49-yard line. Let's see, I um, thought maybe we might see some reserve, but it will still be Brunsma in at quarterback with a receiver to either side. Handoff up the middle to the 45 and fighting his way forward to the 44-yard line is Cumberland Gap, and I believe that should be, it has been Miracle. Yeah, I believe you're right. And it is. Number 14, Logan Miracle again. He's uh, had his way with Hancock County, especially here in the second half. Cumberland Gap's... Uh, Running attack is a well-oiled machine here in the second. Second down and five. Ball at the Indian 44. One receiver off to either side. Brunsma again with a wing tee. He'll hand off to Miracle again. Past the 40. Dragging the pile to the first down marker and getting the first down to about the 38-yard line. Another Cumberland Gap ground, uh, ground play that works for the Panthers. Seems like uh, Coach Klein really is just picking any kind of run play that works and, and sticking with it. Ball's at the 38-yard line with 35 seconds. He counting third quarter. Panthers looking at another K and K medal first down in 10, as we said, at the Hancock County 38-yard line. Uh, the way Cumberland Gap is running the clock, they will have to get this playoff with under 20 seconds to go, but this could be the last one of the third quarter. One receiver off to either side. Handoff up the middle over to the right side of the 35 and being taken down in bounds at about the 34-yard line. And it is going to be miracle on that one, and that will bring us to the end of the third quarter of action. We played three here at Cumberland Gap High School. Our score, it is Cumberland Gap 26. It is Hancock County, zero. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite, because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary, the perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. Make k, k Metal Sales your only stop for all your residential and commercial metal building needs. For the past 23 years, k, k Metal Sales has covered the tri-state area with quality custom roofing and siding with many grades, gauges, and colors in stock. If you're looking for complete steel or wood building packages or steel or wood trusses, k, k Metal Sales can help with that, as well as heavy-duty custom carports. Great folks and great prices. Stop by k, k Metal Sales located at 6986 Cumberland Gap Parkway or call 423-869-4261. Back out to Panther Field as we start the fourth quarter of action. It'll be second down and five upcoming for Cumberland Gap. They lead this one 26 to nothing over the Hancock County Indians. Handoff up the middle, pulling the ball forward past the 30 to about the 29-yard line. I got the 28. I believe that was for Cumberland Gap, Jacob Beatty, a junior running back who gets his first carry of the game as the fourth quarter starts, but possibly the reserves could be coming in for the Panthers. You say a name, I don't see a number. Number nine. Okay. Yeah. I knew we would get into this point where we're going to see some reserves come in, and it's just a matter of work. This roster is very fresh to us. Sure. We actually cut it, what, 30 minutes before we went on the air. Yeah. But nevertheless, it's a K and K metal first down and 10. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Hand off up the middle to the outside of the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and inside the 5 down to the 3-yard line is... Beatty, and he's going to get a flag. Yeah. He celebrated too hard on that one. Just a little too much. Got 25 yards on the run and then proceeded to throw the ball straight up in the air, which will give him 15 yards he does not want to have. Uh, not exactly. And that Coach Klein definitely doesn't want to have. I'm sure he'll have 
little bit of a conversation with uh, Beatty. We may actually see Beatty come to the sideline now. Yeah. And we do. <laughs> no surprise there. So Beatty's run would have taken it to the three, but the 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty will put this one back to about the, should be about the 18-yard line. And it is. So the ball now at the 18. It's a K and came out on first down. Should be first down and 10. So I'm going to say it's first down and goal to go. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Brunsma has a wing to either side. He's going to hand off up the middle and bring the ball forward to about the 16-yard line. Is back to Miracle. Back to who's... Um, Miracle, I should say, the workhorse who has been uh, the number one ball carrier for Cumberland Gap tonight. No surprise there as the clock keeps on rolling. It'll be second down. They're going to call it second and goal to go ball to 16-yard line. Clock will run. And again here, you know, early in the fourth quarter, no sense of urgency for Cumberland Gap? No. Leading by 26, you'd like to take all the time that you need. Balls on the near hash mark as we're under 10 and a half minutes left to go. Fourth quarter. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Bronzma goes under the center. He will hand off up the middle. And getting the ball forward to about the 14-yard line was the fullback again. Let's see which one it was this time. And it's going to be a miracle once again. Getting two more yards. And it'll be third down and goal to goal from the 14. Again, another third down and goal with, you know, longer than 10 yards to go until the end zone. We've seen that for Cumberland Gap before uh, early in the first half. Although Cumberland Gap don't believe they'll like to put the ball in the air here. Third down. Bronzma busted play. Pitches out. And this is Fusen coming to the near side, bailing his quarterback out. Yeah, you said it. He really did kind of bail Brunsma out as it was another kind of uh, mishap in the backfield, but nonetheless turned into a pretty decent little pitch play, although it wasn't enough to uh, get all the way into the end zone. And now to be fourth down and goal to go for Cumberland Gap. Ball's at the Hancock County 13-yard line. One receiver off to either side. Cumberland Gap in a wing tee. It's going to be a bobbled snap. And this is just going to be a, here's a quick pitch back. This is Dalton Miracle trying to make something of it. He's to the 15. He's to the 10. He's to the 5. Trying to find a hole. Does he get there? He does not. He is down to the 1 yard line. Okay. It'll be a turnover on downs. Dalton Miracle tried to create lightning in the bottle but just a yard short. Well, even though that one falls short of the goal line and goes at the, probably like about the one-inch line, that should go on the highlight reels uh, for the 2018 season because that was remarkable <laughs> as uh, kind of just the desperation heave backwards there in the backfield that Dalton Miracle, as you said, made the most of. Almost got away to the end zone. I just actually saw, as you were writing down notes, Jacob Beatty back on the field for covering the gap, went over to the official, shook his hand, I guess apologizing for the uh, sports unsportsmanlike penalty uh, just a little while ago. So all is well for a Cumberland Gap. The Indians will start with a K and K medal first down and 10 at their one yard line with 9.15 left to go fourth quarter. I told Brandon in the break, I had an interesting stat. Here it is. Hancock County is now 9.15 from the end of this contest. They have yet to cross midfield at all. Wow. And right now they have the shadow of their end zone on a K and K medal first down. Quarterback sneak up the middle just to get a few yards. And it'll be brought out to the, let's call it the three-yard line on the quarterback keep. Yeah, with the way that that play just ended with Miracle, again, you had to establish some sort of breathing room with the quarterback sneak and avoid a safety. And now Hancock County, again, you know, it's not a good situation for the Indians since they haven't crossed midfield and they're inside their, their own 10 at the moment. Ball's at the three. It'll be second down and eight upcoming for the Indians as we now have 8.43 in county left to go. Fourth quarter, coming along that leading this one 26 to nothing. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Poor with split backs. Poor pitches out, out of the end zone. 
And bringing the ball forward to about the, I believe the three-yard line again is Hipshire. I believe Hipshire's had uh, the uh, most carries of the evening for Hancock County. It's kind of split between him and uh, Ethan Short tonight. And, of course, if you are backed away against your own end zone, I mean, you can't go wrong giving the ball to either Hipshire or Short to gain some distance as they're both bruisers of running backs. That'll be third down. Let's call it seven. Hancock County is two for nine on third downs this evening. This one's in the shadow of their own end zone as it is to be taken at the four-yard line. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Offset out of the right for the quarterback. He's going to roll off left side. Look, it's a keeper. Still on his feet, stutter stepping and realizes he's in trouble. And he'll take a hit and be dropped back to about the three-yard line for a loss of one. And the hesitation from T.J. Poor as he saw the defense collapsing on him nearly cost him almost a safety as he kind of stuttered backwards a little bit and uh, kind of maybe have forgotten that he was almost standing in his own end zone. So now with fourth down and a long way to go, still backed up right into your own house for Hancock County. you got to believe they'll try and maybe go for it here just to... I think they'll punt it because it's so deep. Now the yeah, problem is probably. Hancock County has had a few bad snaps on punts and even have one partially blocked. The punter is Hipshire and he stands about eight yards deep in his own end zone. Decent snap. Hipshire will get this one off. Probably one of the better punts they've had all evening. Yes. And it will take a Hancock County roll and it will eventually be down at about the Indian 30, it's called the 34-yard line, and that's where the Panthers will start with AK and Kimmel first down and 10. Especially considering the circumstances of where Hancock County was in the field with Hipshire all the way back in his own end zone, a very nice punt from the Indians. We did see some good punts from Hipshire early on in the contest, and after a few mistakes, we were able to, uh, our Hancock was able to right the ship. So it'll be a K and K medal first down and 10 here for the Panthers. See if they bring a new quarterback out. They've actually got a, they've marked the ball forward to the 32 yard line and that's where they'll start with it. I'm, I look, actually the, the head official just realized the ball was spotted incorrectly. It'll be a K and K medal first down and 10. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. It's going to be a handoff up the middle to the 30 and down to about the 20, almost to the 25-yard line. And on the run was that uh, I did not catch that number, I have to I, be honest. Yeah, I couldn't. There was too many uh, numbers in the pile there to spot who was the ball carrier. I do believe we have a new QB for coming the gap, if I'm not mistaken, on this series. Ball is at the 26-yard line. We'll get those numbers here in just a second. It'll be second down and three. Handoff again up the middle. And the ball being brought forward to about the 21-yard line. It was Tyler Mays, who was the carrier for the Panthers, who is a sophomore running back who got the carry on the last play as well. And I believe it's Holden McDaniel who is in at quarterback for Cumberland Gap. Ball now being spotted at the 21-yard line for a gain of five. And it'll be a K and K metal first down and 10 for the Panthers. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. Again, it's a handoff up the middle. And inside the 20 to the 19 yard line go the Panthers. Was it Mays again? I'm not sure. It may have been a different one this time. I think Mays may have checked out I think for that you're right. particular play. Not sure who it was this time around. Coming the gap's got so many options. They're running players in and out of the field before we can catch numbers. Yeah, substituting very quickly. Second down and eight while we got a chance. Score of interest to bring to you. It is Middlesbrough 16, Claiborne 6. That update as of five minutes ago. So Middlesbrough trying to improve to one and one on the year. Here it's second down and eight. Handoff up the middle to the 20. And being stopped is the Panthers. One of the best things that uh, this can do for Cumberland Gap here, leading big and late in the contest, getting some of these underclassmen some exposure, some newer players uh, some minutes. Probably didn't have many opportunities last week when they were in the middle of a dogfight with Union County, so valuable uh, playing time for uh, some Cumberland Gap players, such as Mays, to uh, name a single one. 
Third down, I'm coming here for the Panthers. Third down, let's call it six yards to go. One receiver to either side. Quarterback hands off up the middle. And right now, Cumberland Gap's just running that fullback dime over and over and over again. And it's going to set up a fourth down situation as they'll put the ball forward to the caught 12 yard line. And we see a few Cumberland Gap substitutes now come in. Really switching up the lineup every chance that you can get for uh, Coach Klein as you feel that the game is in hand here with inside, almost inside four minutes to go and up by 26. Fourth down upcoming for the Panthers. Fourth down and two. One receiver off to either side. Handoff to the right side, taking a hit, getting the first down. And it will be first down and well, it's right at the 10 maybe. It was, a, it was a nice job from whoever the Cumberland Gap carrier was. Again, it's a very far vantage point uh, from our point of view to see who the Cumberland Gap uh, deep running back was. Excuse me, but he took a nice hit as he crossed the sticks and was able to hold on and move the chains again. So a nice rush attack from Cumberland Gap again. First down, goal to goal, this time at the 10-yard line. It's a K&K medal first down and goal to go. One receiver off to either side as we're at 348 and counting, fourth quarter. Handoff up the middle again on another dive. Inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. And again, we apologize. We're trying to catch these numbers as fast as we can. I think that could have been Napier, Logan Napier, the, another, a freshman running back for Cumberland Gap, who his name was called there. We feel like we've had about four or five different ball carriers each play just in the in the last few uh, in the last few snaps for the Panthers. It'll be second down, goal to go. One receiver to the left side, one to the right. It's going to be a hand up the middle, and the ball will be moved forward to now the still about the nine yard line for no gain. And was that Napier again? I uh, think possibly. Again, it's so hard to tell. Yeah. So the ball's at the nine. I think that actually could have been Adam, number 83, another freshman back for the gap, Ethan Slusher. Okay. For the Panthers, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what I saw. It'll be third down and goal to go. Ball's the nine-yard line. One receiver. It's going to be a handoff up the middle, and Cumberland Gap will not get this one. The ball be smart down at the five for a gain of four. I think that may have been Napier once again. Again, alternating now between we'll give it to him. carriers for Cumberland Gap. That makes it uh, fourth down and goal to yeah, go. Yeah, fourth down and not a whole lot left until the end zone for the gap. Under two minutes now left to go, fourth quarter. Cumberland Gap with fourth down and goal to go, this time at the Hancock County six-yard line. One receiver off to either side. Quarterback will go under the center. Hand off to the right side, and Hancock County will stop this one at the four, and will turn Cumberland Gap over on downs. So now Hancock County with what will possibly be their final drive of the contest. Again... Not much time to go in the fourth quarter. They were able to stop the Panthers' reserves from getting into the end zone. And again, if you look forward for Hancock County now, dropping their first contest of the year at one and one, have to be go, go back to the drawing board a little bit next weekend. They're going to have to regroup. they got a regional contest next week against Unica. Come on, Gap will be back at home next week hosting Meigs County in regional action. Meigs County came in as the number two team yeah. in the state of Tennessee in Class 2A this evening. So what a huge matchup that's going to be. It looks like they rolled to a victory tonight as well. I've not seen a final on that one. Uh, I don't know if we said this one on the air. Union County did win tonight. Yes. 52 to nothing over Cosby. That's right. We'll have to look up. Uh, last time they had a victory that big, last time they had a shutout victory. Yes. that would be, uh, be an interesting stack to look up. We'll go through the entire scoreboard at the conclusion of tonight's contest, as well as name our Norris Landing Marina and First Century Bank player of the game. On a K and K medal first down and 10 for the Indians. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. And the ball will be out to the two-yard line. And a ring up second down. 
Now Hancock County doing the same as Cumberland Gap did on their offensive side, rotating players in and out a little bit to try and get some uh, more exposure, some more minutes that will definitely help out down the road in future, not just later this season, but in future seasons for some of those underclassmen. Difference being they've got the shadow of their end zone right now that they've got to worry about as we're under 75 seconds left to go. Cumberland Gap will improve to 2-0. and As we said, next week we'll host Meigs County. It'll be Owen, or excuse me, one and one for Hancock County. They will be back at home next week as they'll host Unica in regional action. Second down and 12. One receiver off to either side. I formation here for the Indians. That Cumberland Gap versus Mex County game next week will also be our Old Town Grill game of the week. Handoff, fullback up the middle. Indians will bring the ball forward to about the, let's call it the five yard line for a gain of three. But the clock does continue to run as we approach third down. Glance at the clock here with 30 seconds and counting. Hancock County may have to run one more play here on third down. Come on, Gap getting some players in and off the field on defense as we're now under 15 seconds left to go. Still trying to get some players off the field. Hurrying before the snap. And the officials are discussing something over the ball, and the clock's going to run out. So Cumberland Gap will improve to 2-0 as they defeat Hancock County tonight by the final score of 26 to nothing. Folks, stay with us for our Old Town Grill postgame wrap-up. We'll name our Norris Landon Marina and First Century Bank player of the game and also go around the scoreboard as we wrap it up. Hancock County loses to Cumberland Gap tonight 26 to nothing. It's the Old Town Grill. The Old Town Grill is a special place where you bring more than family, more than friends. Bring a hearty appetite. Because at the Old Town Grill, you'll never walk away hungry. A delicious change from the ordinary. The perfect place to bring the entire family. The best food and plenty of it. Join the fun and treat your appetite to something special. It's the OTG. The OTG is the place to be. Make K and K Metal Sales your only stop for all your residential and commercial metal building needs. For the past 23 years, K and K Metal Sales has covered the tri-state area with quality custom roofing and siding, with many grades, gauges, and colors in stock. If you're looking for complete steel or wood building packages or steel or wood trusses, K and K Metal Sales can help with that, as well as heavy-duty custom carports. Great folks and great prices. Stop by K and K Metal Sales located at 6986 Cumberland Gap Parkway, or call 423-869-4261. It's a final here from Cumberland Gap High School tonight. The Panthers shut out the Hancock County Indians by the final score of 26 to nothing for the Panthers, their first defensive shutout since the year of 2008. Now at 2-0 on the season, they'll play host to Mex County next Friday night. We'll be here with the Old Town Grill High School Game of the Week, and we we'll hope you'll join us. Once again, for everyone behind the scenes, I'm Adam Haley. Cumberland Gap, a winner, 26 to nothing. We'll see you next week.